Hey guys, here to talk about uh, doing a 242J swap into your V8 Grand Cherokee. I'm going to do some helpful tips, things to do, things not to do. Let's get started. Okay, <clears throat> so here's my 247 transfer case. Uh, this one came out of my V8 Grand Cherokee. It's an 02, has quad to drive. Uh, this one has the inline six cylinder input shaft. This is what connects into the back of the transmission. Uh, the reason you can tell is because it's a very short shaft. Now the V8 it's going to stick out about right here, about three, four more inches. Um, this is actually the part you got to swap out on your transfer cases when you do this swap. Uh, a couple other things you got to do, you swap out some, you do some swapping out on the drive shafts, you know, you swap out some parts and uh, that's really it. That's all it takes. Um, talk a little bit about this. Here's the drive shaft I was talking about. Uh, this one here. Uh, this is the rear drive shaft. This one came out of the donor Jeep. This is the inline six cylinder drive shaft. Uh, this slip yoke here, this is the V8 one. You actually have to take the slip yoke from the inline six cylinder shaft, take that off, put that onto the V8 shaft. If that makes sense. Um, you cannot reuse the front drive shaft. This is the front drive shaft from the donor Jeep also. It is the Rezeppa shaft. I, those are terrible. Don't use those. Um, the reason you cannot use this one is because it's too long. Uh, it won't fit. And the reason you can't use this shaft from the donor uh, Jeep is because it's too short. So when you swap out those two parts, you make the perfect size drive shaft. You don't have to take your drive shaft to a shop and get it lengthened or shortened or nothing like that. You literally just swap out these uh, slip yokes. I'll show that uh, later in the video. I'll show you how mine looks. Another thing, um, <clears throat> when you do this swap, you have to take uh, both transfer cases completely apart and you swap out those in input shafts like I said. A um, couple of helpful, th uh, helpful things. When you go get your tools, you're going to need snap ring and lock ring pliers. Now I suggest getting these from you know a good place. Uh, I got this from Pep Boys. This is the lock ring plier. Well worth it. I spent 15 bucks. Uh, I have had no problems with using these. The big mistake I made was I went to Harbor Freight to buy snap ring pliers and they bent and broke on the first one I took off. So yeah, that was a bit, that was a bit of a hard time getting that apart. So I actually ended up getting a nice pair of these. But uh, here's my Harbor Freight ones that you can see they're just crap. You're going to need good tools. Now, with both uh, transfer cases, they're going to have three bolts on top that are going to be a 12-point, 10-millimeter. Uh, I've seen on some other videos of a guy not really knowing what these were, and he welded sockets on these to get them off. So here's a little helpful tent, uh, hint. Just use a 10-millimeter, 12-point socket. That's the perfect size for these, and that's how you get those off. Okay. Another thing you're going to have to swap out, but, well, it's not really needed, but it is recommended, uh, is your shifter console. Me, I have a sticker showing all the uh, modes that I can be in, you know, two-wheel drive, part-time, full-time, neutral, four-low, because if you... If you're familiar with the system you have, it's only four-wheel drive, full-time, neutral, and then four-low for a quad drive system. These are pretty easy to take apart. If you find a donor vehicle with a good, sh a good select track shifter, I recommend getting it. They are well worth it. Um, do not just take the uh, plate off. These are these are a pain in the ass to get off. I mean these knobs do come off but it's very hard to do and honestly it's not worth it literally it's four bolts that take these off and uh, a couple of cables here and uh, and then you just got the light disconnector right here very easy well worth it okay 
Here's my 242J. It's already installed. Um, here's the drive shaft I was telling you about. See, this is the this is the inline six-cylinder slip yoke that's on the V8 drive shaft. It's a complete swap. They're both the same size U-joint. Everything swaps in. And as you can see, you have the perfect size that you need. I have taken this thing off-roading. I've put it through its paces. Uh, I've had no problems with uh, this slipping out or nothing like that, so don't worry. I am on two inches of lift. Um, I'm not sure, though, if you have a higher lift or anything like that, but I do still have a lot of play left in this coming in and out, so... <coughs> Let's see. There it is installed. And there's the tag. The tag reads 242WJ. Now, this you don't have to do anything with the bolt pattern on the back. Uh, it's the same. It's the same for the V8 and everything. So there's no worries there. And uh, uh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, if you have a <clears throat> if you have a double car down front drive shaft in your Jeep now before you do the swap and you get a transfer case that has this front uh output shaft, I think it's called, I can't remember. Um they they can be swapped out easily. Just one nut on the front, this comes off and you can swap out the shafts. Um I'll go ahead and show you. Let's take this off real quick. That way you get an idea what I'm talking about. That way you can reuse your front drive shaft. Because no matter what, even even if you have the donor shaft there, you can't use it because it's obviously too long. So you have to use your front drive shaft, which is what I did. I yanked this off and I swapped them out. It's very easy. Good time too to do a uh, front seal if you uh, get in there too. Very easy. Also, another thing uh, when you're doing the swap, uh, there's going to be a bracket that's attached to the transmission, and there's going to be two holes. Uh, when you take it apart, it's going to be in the the top hole. That's because of how long this shifter is. All you have to do is take the C-clip off, put the uh, the shifter cable through the bottom hole. That way, uh, you can use your 242 transfer case because it's the shifter for the 242 is literally half this size. So, <clears throat> here's that bolt pattern I was telling you about. There's six bolts on the top here, and uh, here's the breather hose line. And uh, like I said, you got to take apart that shifter, or take about the tra take apart the transfer cases to swap out these shafts. Now, another helpful thing here is one thing uh, you may notice when you take these apart is uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this off real quick and show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, this uh, this is actually the seal that I'm taking off now. You have to take this apart when you take the transfer cases apart. It's four bolts. Uh, this does have to be siliconed back on. Obviously, you have to clean both surfaces real good and apply a bead of silicone around. Uh, you literally you put it uh, on the flat surface here, just like that, and slightly on the inside. But you don't put any in this little... Uh, this little groove. The reason I'll show you is because uh, one important tip is uh, you'll notice when you take this apart, there's a groove here, and that actually goes over this little hole right here. Uh, that's actually for the fluid to come in to lubricate this bearing. So don't don't uh, mess that up, and you don't want to get any silicone in here because uh, you don't want to clog up that hole. Obviously this goes on just like that. Okay? Make sense? Okay, another couple of a uh, little bit of information. Uh, this, two, this 242 uh, takes automatic transmission fluid. Uh, 
There also is a a wiring harness for this. If it's not required, you don't need it. But there is a there is a connector on the top here. You can't I can't really get a good picture of it, but uh it will connect into your uh, wiring harness. There's a wall. There is a connector on the drop on the passenger side. There's a wiring harness up in this area, and uh, you can. There's already a connector for it. All you have to do is take off the uh, the female end of it or the male end, and uh, you can connect right into it. And what that does is it uh. <clears throat> It, uh, on your dash light, it'll, it'll indicate when you're in four-wheel drive part-time. Kind of cool. Uh, not required. You don't need it. But uh, something if you wanted to do that. But I'll go ahead and show you. And this is the connector I was talking about. Uh, this connects into a uh, connector that's already exists on your Jeep. All you have to do is remove this and connect the wiring harness in, uh, and you're good to go. Uh, other than that, you can uh, also get the select track shifter. I'll show you that. And another reason you want to get a select track shifter is that it already has a built-in safe uh, feature to it. Uh, this lever you actually have to push down in order to get it to get into four low. That way, when you're shifting it, uh, you don't actually throw it into neutral or four-wheel drive low when you're driving. You don't want to do that. You'll mess some stuff up. Because on your uh, your quad drive or your quad track shifter, you do not have this feature, and uh, you know just a good little thing. You know these light up too. It's it's just an all all around good thing to put in. And that, that light I was telling you about, it'll light up uh, over in this area. It'll just say four wheel drive part time. Pretty cool. And uh, I am using the double card on drive shaft. I used the slip yoke that came off of my 247. Um, as you can see. And uh, there are a couple other things with these. Um, I mean, they did, they are, it is a transfer case that came off a of six cylinder. You are putting it behind a V8. So there is some discrepancy about that. I haven't had any problems. I've taken it pretty, pretty hard wheeling. I've, I've, I put it through its paces and it's been working just fine, so not really too worried about it. There are some things about uh, people saying, you know, stretch change and things like that. I think you can go online and get some parts. You can upgrade the sprockets and the chains to uh, be able to take the abuse from a V8. But like I said, I've put about 10,000 miles on this uh, and uh, I haven't had any problems so far. It sh everything shifts good and everything works, so I'm very pleased with it. I do like uh, the four wheel drive part time. Because uh, I don't like the idea of uh, the four-wheel drive telling me when it wants to, you know, go into four-wheel drive. So, another thing to think about. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this video was informational for you. Uh, there are some very good uh, forms online for taking apart, uh, you know, step-by-step -step instructions to take out your transfer case to do this swap for the 242 HD but uh, this one takes a couple more steps it's a lot cheaper um, uh, you can probably go to any any junkyard and you'll be able to find these things plentiful like I said these HDs uh, the 242 HDs are very hard to find they're very rare very expensive but uh, there are some lucky few out there that can find them I was the unfortunate one I couldn't find one so I had to go with a 242 J or LD light duty as some people call it um, thanks for watching